I've been really keen into Lego since I was three years old, just generally all my life, and I've been just, just a, creative, a creative background. I'm sort of quite well known for the trains that I build. I've even got videos of it running as well. This is why it's important for me for it to not only look correct, but for it to work. What I do with personal builds is I strive for as realistic as possible, which can have adverse effects because sometimes people just walk straight past and say, no, Dad, that's not Lego. The Lego company started to headhunt adult fans of Lego to be some of their set designers and TT Games decided to go along the same route so they placed an advert specifically for an adult fan of Lego to try and bring a, a bit of a better edge to the creativity on the model building side. So hence I'm here doing it. It's basically our job for any models that are required within the game. We'll always try and use Lego's official sets. However, there can be certain times when some of the official sets, they don't actually have some of the functions that we're going to require. It's then our job to either redesign an official set for Lego to then approve it to be put into the game or for us to just completely design it from scratch and, and that's that's the good part for us that's the bit that we like to do a lot of these they're sort of builds from over the last games as you can see a lot of them are built in sort of multi-colors because it's just far faster just to grab the nearest thing as you can see from the drawers that we've got we've got the parts in regardless of color but I mean, yeah, we've got everything from Indiana Jones 2 all the way through the seven games that I've worked on. But there can be certain times when you get into larger builds where it's just, it's easier straight away to go digital because you'll, you'll get an instant sense of scale. Obviously, this is still a, a very much a work in progress at the moment. We have all the different types of Lego that's been produced. We've got the version of all the Lego colour palette range as well, so we can then colour change the parts to any colour that we want to. Lego is very much about you're limited to parts, and that's half the challenge of the creativity. That's typical of the concept art that we'll get. That for the rear, and those are literally the three pictures that I had to build that from. That was a big job. That's one of my favourite, yeah. In real life, you get a lot of sort of flowing lines and natural lines, but with Lego, you're sort of challenged. So it can be something like a transition from that sort of angle there going to another angle there. In the real world, that looks acceptable because your, line, your eyes just sort of flow with it. But on screen, something like that would stand out like a sore of thumb. We have been given the go-ahead for if we're ever stuck and we need to design a part specifically for a build, we're okay to do it because it's what Lego would do for a new set, but I won't. Because we're doing the games and it's, it's for the fans of Lego as well. It's really our goal that everything is buildable within games. So if they see a part that doesn't exist, we've sort of, as far as I'm concerned, we've blown it. I've not done my job properly. I should be able to do it without having to create a new element for it. This is sort of a typical example of when we're designing vehicles, we've got official Lego vehicles. So we use those as a size reference and these are ones that we've been coming up with for Marvel. That's an example of five vehicles that we've built now for Marvel. Every day you'll drive to work and I'll be looking at something thinking, how could I build that out of Lego? Yeah, it's just the way my, my mind works. Best job in the world, without a doubt, yeah.